Welcome to another episode of Horrifica, where I, your lovely and impeccable host, Mercy Grimm, talk all about horror. This is a special episode where I will be taking an in-depth look at what it means to be a final girl in the horror genre. This episode is going to be a long one, so go ahead and grab yourself a snack to munch on as we talk about the dichotomy of the final girl. Before I kick this video off, I just want to remind you that if you like this channel, please consider subscribing. It would really mean the world to me. Horror content is my passion, and I would love to share it with everyone. So if this is your kind of content, then please hit that sub button and become a part of this horrific community. Now, on to the video. The Final Girl. She is almost always her namesake, the last woman standing. Usually to last the whole movie, sometimes to be killed off in the sequel. The final girl is the penultimate glue of the classic horror movie. We most prominently see the final girl in the slasher genre, but she can exist within any type of horror movie. Now, I will be doing some spoilers for a few movies and I'm going to list them right here. It might go a little fast, you might need to pause. I just don't want to spoil anything for anyone who may not have seen these classic movies. Alright, let's get started. The best movie to start with would be The Cabin in the Woods. This movie is iconic for its humorous approach to horror. It shows off all the classic tropes of the horror genre and how they all tie into the central plot of the film. Our final girl in this movie is Dana Polk, played by Kirsten Connolly. She and her friends take a camping trip that goes horribly wrong when they read from a creepy book in the basement. We soon get a fourth wall break where we find out that they are actually being manipulated by a lab of scientists who are using them as sacrifices to an all-powerful world-destroying god. In this movie, all the tropes of horror are explored, but the most important one is the final girl. Dana is the central focus of the plot, and when she and her friends discover the truth at the end of the movie, she would rather choose death over living to appease the god. We watch the end as the world is destroyed. Dana became the final girl of the movie because she marked all the boxes for the final girl trope that we have now come to know. Number one, she is innocent in nature. Usually this means she is the virgin of the group or not interested in having sex during the movie. And she's also not interested in any alcohol or drugs or any other illegal substances. Number two, she is intelligent enough to escape elaborate attempts at her life. Number three, she exhibits a higher level of intelligence compared to her companions. This means, and it ties into number two, she is very good at escaping her own death. Now that we have established the idea of the final girl from talking about Dana, we can dive into the controversy about what it means to be a final girl. And is it necessarily empowering like some claim it to be? It is no secret that most early horror movies from the 40s, 50s, and 60s depict the female lead as in need of saving, and that was her only reason for being in the movie. She was the reason for the male lead to continue on his journey throughout the film. We don't truly see the idea of the final girl until we reach the beginning of the peak of horror in the 1970s. Of course, that means we're looking at Jess Bradford from 1974's Black Christmas. This film dealt with a lot of touchy topics that were going on at the time, such as misogyny and the abortion issue, the abortion topic. Roe vs. Wade happened recently in that year before this movie came out. It is a really interesting topic that I might cover at a later time, but right now let's focus on the birth of the final girl. Throughout the film, Jess has to be strong and take charge of what is happening around her. She decides to make important choices that will possibly better her own life in the future and not listen to whatever the man in her life says. She refuses to back down from her decisions despite all of the various male antagonists that she encounters throughout the film. Her fate is ultimately left unanswered by the end of the movie, but it is hopefully assumed that she does in fact survive her ordeal. Jess is the earliest example of a true and powerful final girl. But here comes the question, does she seem empowering? In my opinion, yes. In this case, she seems to be in control of her choices and refuses to take them back no matter what. 
Jess is a truly inspirational and empowering final girl, and she was probably an inspiration for a lot of young women at the time facing issues similar to her own. But I said that we would cover the idea that the final girl has become less of an empowering iconic figure and more of a figurehead to drive the plot of the story forward. To get this idea across, we need to look at a different movie. Now, you might think I'm wrong on this, but let's talk about Laurie Strode from 1979's Halloween. Yes, she is a powerful final girl. Possibly the ultimate final girl of the horror genre itself. And in later films, she definitely shows us how badass she is. But in this first film of the franchise, I think people forget that she was in fact saved by one of the male lead characters, Dr. Loomis. This notion that ultimately she had to be saved by a man in the end makes her multiple encounters and her chase scene along with the fight at the end of the movie feel a little less empowering to me. It shows the viewer that at the end of the film, that though she may be smart and cunning, she still wasn't powerful enough to save herself. That doesn't mean that I don't think Laurie Strode wasn't redeemed in later films. I mean, look at Halloween 2018. Strode is now a cunning and intelligent badass woman who knows exactly how to protect herself. They really turned her character around by giving her all the power to protect herself and showing that the men in her life don't stand a chance against the shape. By the end of the movie, we see a triple final girl escape in a very Texas Chainsaw fashion. It is much appreciated to have this character be redeemed in this manner. And that is not to say that throughout the earlier movies in the franchise, she isn't redeemed in some way as well. Because I really do think that as her character grows throughout the series and as we see her in the majority of the films that she's in, yes, you know which one I'm talking about with that beginning scene where she just dies, which is ridiculous and not canon, by the way. We get to see her grow as a character and grow as an individual and become more independent of herself. So she does become a better final girl as the series goes along. But that first movie, she's ultimately not the empowering final girl that most people give her credit to be. Now, we come to the ultimate question of whether or not the final girl is truly a good or a bad trope. And I think the answer to that question is ultimately up to the viewer and the values and, be and beliefs of the audience. Personally, I think that it is solely dependent on the movie and how they depict the girl. Characters like Sidney Prescott and Nancy Thompson are shown to be strong and independent women who are both tactful and intelligent enough to fight for their lives, even when put in very interesting situations and predicaments. Whereas characters like Ginny Field and Sally Hardcity are arguably not as independent and seem to survive out of pure luck or just one moment of cunning toward the end of the film. Then we have a character like Aliens Ellen Ripley. Yeah, of course I'm including Ripley on this list, guys. Come on. This woman is more than just a final girl, in my opinion. She literally does not need the help of her companions to survive her ordeal, unlike most final girls. In fact, we see her right from the get-go trying to make important decisions for the group, and they don't even bother listening. By the end of the film, she's the only remaining human who escapes, saving her cat as well. I, I cannot stress how much I love that the cat lives. It means the world to me when an animal lives in a horror film. I have to plug in two more girls that exhibit the same spunk and drive as Ripley and show the true nature of the final girl that I always want to see when I watch a horror movie. That would be Erin from You're Next and Grace from Ready or Not. Erin shows us the true power of the final girl when she immediately takes charge of the situation, showing the audience that women can be strong in very dire situations. She even mentions the fact that she was raised as a survivalist at one point in the movie, which, if you haven't seen the movie, quick spoiler, one of the antagonists was actually listening to this conversation, pretending to be one of the good guys, and she was actually even surprised to hear Aaron say this because she was laying traps to catch the people that were trying to kill them. Survivalist Instincts 101. The writer and the director really delivered on a strong and intelligent leading lady for this film. Now when it comes to Grace, usually a woman like her would be the damsel in distress. 
And at first, she kind of is, but when she realizes the true gravity of what's happening around her, and that no one can truly help her due to their own selfish interests or misunderstandings, she becomes a bloody powerhouse. Truly bloody by the end with that scene on the staircase. That scene makes the movie for me. There is one girl that I technically can and cannot include on this list. It all depends on the version of the movie that you hold to be canon. That is, of course, the lead in The Descent, Sarah. She and her friends fight for their lives, and in the American version, she prevails, but not so much in the UK version. Regardless of the version that you believe to be canon, Sarah and her friends are badass women who put up a strong fight against a very strong adversary, or I should say group of adversaries, and that is why I had to include her in this discussion. So whether or not you believe that she should have actually lived that through that situation or she should have died in that situation, I really think that she does deserve it because she technically was the final girl of the descent. So, my opinion aside on that. Of course, there are many other comparisons that I could talk about when it comes to the final girl trope in horror. I would also like to mention that the idea of the final girl may be the most consistent part of the horror genre, but that does not mean it stays the same in its ideas and implementation. We can also bring up the idea of the final guy. Now, this is a very controversial topic amongst the horror community, or at least in my eyes it is when I talk to people about it. Some feel that it's wrong to be stealing the thunder, so to speak, from the women. But wouldn't it make sense if we were to um, be all about inclusion, as many claim to be, that we should have at least a few final guys in our horror movies as well? I'm not saying that they don't exist. Uh, take one of the most famous final guys, for example. One of the leads from the Saw franchise, Dr. Gordon. He even beats out Hoffman in survival and is still alive after all this time, at least according to his profile. The Saw fran movies in their franchise may be confusing and convoluted, but he is the one true consistency that we can count on when watching them. Another famous final guy would be the star of Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Jesse Walsh. He is probably my favorite final guy in all of horror, because though most people dislike the second Nightmare on Elm Street movie, I actually enjoy it for its gay undertones and fun moments. I know that may also be a controversial topic, but I did watch its individual documentary on Shudder. <clears throat> Always have to plug in Shudder, don't I? And I actually really enjoyed it. So if you have Shudder, you should totally go watch it because it was really interesting to see the look into how the actor felt playing him. Because, it, I mean, it was a role that he was not expecting, but Mark Patton has kind of made it his own thing now. And he goes to these horror conventions and he treats it really special. So I can appreciate that. Anyway, back to what I was talking about. I really felt the need to mention the idea of the final guy in this conversation because he is a part of the horror genre, though he is few and far between. So tell me in the comments if you also remember any final guys from horror that you wanted me to mention that I didn't mention. I, only, I know I only talked about two and there's probably at least one list out there of them. So if you want to plug that in the comments for me to possibly look at it a future time, I would be very welcome to. Now that I've talked about the final guys in horror, I think it's time to wrap this up. Now we have looked at all the avenues of the final girl. And now I want to hear your opinion on what you think a final girl is and what you think a final girl means. Do you think I was right? Do you think I pointed out all the good and the bad? Did I miss something? Get down in those comments and tell me what y'all think about the final girl and her history in the horror genre. Do you like them? Do you think horror needs them anymore? Let me know down in the comments. I just want to take a moment to say 
thank you to all my new subscribers. I actually had a hope that I would reach 15 subs by the end of 2020, and I'm happy to say that I did, and we're now at 16. You guys who support me mean the world to me, and I really appreciate it, and it keeps me wanting to make these videos. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this content and want more, then hit that sub button and turn on your notification bell for more horrific content. I hope you have a great rest of your day, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Until then!